All right, guys. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. So I know you guys have wanted to watch like Zero to Hero a lot, but I actually made a community post. If you guys don't know that, um, I asked basically, do you want to see Vixana's set Emperor skin? And here it is. Shadows loom, but my faith will always protect me. And yeah, so I actually got the skin a couple weeks ago, and I know the post is already like 8 days old, but I felt like today would be a good day to kind of just record this video and show you guys some Vixana gameplay. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Alright, so right now we're in Mythic Honor, so you guys will see that, um, I actually, I think this was during my lose streak, because this was actually a bit of a while before. Um, but yeah, so the thing about Vixana is she's not actually considered to be a meta pick, as you guys know. Um, she's actually considered one of the weirder, like, troll kind of picks, I guess. Mostly because Vixana isn't really a meta mage, per se. Um, she doesn't actually have that many control skills and all. However, you can play her using macro skills, just like how you can play any hero with macro skills, as long as you know, like, how you can play the hero and you know what you're doing. Um, people can't really say anything bad about it, and you can just pick whatever hero you really want. Just make sure you understand that there will be counters, and in this match especially, I kind of kept an eye out for that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, they actually picked Nolan first pick, which is really bad for us, and for me as a Vixana player, because Vixana is really weak against Nolan. Um, so just a little bit of a tip about the drafting process, typically what you want to do is you want to let your cores pick last, right? So this is actually a horrible decision by us, you want your marksman, or your jungler, or your mage to pick second to last, and your tank should always be last pick unless the enemies pick your tank, like they, their tank first. Because the way you want to do it is, your tank is your true MVP of the team. Like, if you don't have a good team, and the enemies have a better tank than you, um, then you're just screwed, right? Um, the enemies will just outplay your tank literally 9 times out of 10, and your team will lose every single team fight. Um, there are exceptions, of course, like, sometimes you can pick like certain tanks like Hylos, Kufra, maybe Franco ahead of time. But just keep in mind that you can only like pick tanks once the enemies have picked their tank, right? Or you have an idea of what kind of a team comp they're going for. So for me, because this is a video obviously, I just kind of like mindlessly chose Vixana. However, looking at the enemy composition, you can see that our popple is our marksman, and obviously I'm our mage, Vixana. And we have a Baxia jungle, or actually no, we have a Yisun Shin jungle and a Batting jungle, well, a Batting XP lane, right? They meanwhile have a Nolan at jungle, a Valor mage, and then an Alpha XP, and they were about to go Atlas, right? So that would be a horrible decision for us because Basically, if they want Atlas, it would be just GG. They ended up blocking Irithel, who is currently speaking the best marksman in the game. And they picked Johnson as well. So we are actually completely screwed because um, unless we have a tank that can basically block Johnson's like car rides, we're basically just going to die instantaneously because they have an incredibly bursty composition. The one advantage that we do have is that we don't have a tanky composition, but they ended up choosing Valor. That's actually a horrible pick on their part because if they had realized that we had two squishy heroes like Vixana and Popple, and since Vixana is a burst mage, uh, Valor should have picked a burst mage as well to kind of counteract that. So that was definitely a mistake on his part. Um, I also didn't really show you guys Vixana's build, so here it is right here. So basically what you want to do is you want to build Clock of Destiny first, and then go for Lightning Truncheon for damage. Um, after that you can really build like Penetration, and then after that just more damage sources. Um, this is actually a little bit different from the build that I use in this game, but um, this is generally like a good build that you could go for. Because you want to prioritize Bursting, you don't want to go for like Fleeting Time and Enchanted Talisman because you prioritize damage over anything else. The pro player build that they recommend is actually for more of a support mage rather than a damage mage. And that's definitely not the solo queue Vixana that you want to play. So definitely go for a more burst build over a you know sustained damage build where you can cast your ult often. Um, you just want to go for pure damage most of the time. So that's what I'll be using in this video. Um, yeah. So now we can just jump right into the game. And yeah, so now we just started. So the first thing you want to do with any burst type mage or any mage in general is unlike buying boots, you actually want to buy elegant gem first. And that's an item that you can get for Clock of Destiny and Necklace of Durance, if I recall correctly. Um, the reason why is because you can actually go for... The, every time you level up, you get bonus stats essentially. You get like a refill of mana and health. Um, basically, you can also choose to buy either more mana or more HP. As you guys just saw, I bought more mana in this instance just because like... I didn't really feel like I'm fighting a hard damage enemy, like it's Valor, right? You guys can see here. And yeah, 
So I went for more mana so that I can stay in the fight a little bit longer in terms of casting skills. So I actually don't lose to Valor that much because you guys know that Vexon is passive. Um, if you guys don't know it, basically it explodes things once they die. And we already see their Nolan invading early game with their tank Johnson because this Nolan probably understands that Nolan is a very strong early game jungler. And that's actually one of the reasons why he's on the permaban list right now. He can pretty much insta-kill everything. And notice how Vexana can basically insta-clear the wave like that. Um, once you buy Elegant Gem, you want to start going for your boots. Um, the reason why is because Elegant Gem is literally just because, like I said, more mana and HP regen every time you level up. And once you do that, you want to actually start building properly. So you get your boots, obviously, for more movement speed. Um, right now, notice how I'm panning along the map. Um, I'm basically trying to predict where the enemies might be. I saw that Nolan had taken his red buff first, so he's probably going to go for blue buff right now. Meaning that once he's done with that, there's a really high chance, yep, you guys can see here, he's going to gain gold lane. So that was my prediction. As you guys play, you guys can understand, um, junglers will typically rotate to the lane that's closest to them once they finish their second buff. And since Nolan took red first, he's going to gain the lane closest to blue, the blue buff, which is the gold lane here. So I'm just like right now trying to help our Yi Sun Jin. Um, I'm just launching stuns, keeping my distance. And if I ever even go like close to Nolan, he can pretty much burst me down instantly. So yeah, I noticed that he didn't really have any opportunities to clear anything, so I just went straight for back to my lane. Um, you guys always want to maximize your farming efficiency, especially when you're playing in a rank like Mythic, because the enemies will be playing really well. And with Vixana, a combo that I noticed that is better is instead of doing 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1 is actually the better combo that you could do. Because I realized that the ult actually lands faster than your first skill does, right? So if you cast your ult, you can actually knock them airborne and then terrorize them with your first skill so that it actually lands and connects to the enemies. So what I just did there was I stunned, I was trying to stun their Nolan so that our Yi Sun Jin wouldn't have to actually like time his retribution properly, right? But um, I only hit Johnson, but that even still was good enough because that meant that Johnson himself couldn't throw his stun, which is his hammer skill, if you guys don't know. Um, and yeah. Um, unfortunately, my video for some reason got cut out here. So I'm basically just like gonna do the replay version of it. So basically you guys can see here that I'm ganking the gold lane now um, because I noticed that their Eartha was low. I actually played a little bit incorrectly here because I should have probably stayed in the bush more like this Tigreal is doing. But I also had a feeling that because my ult is on cooldown, um, she would actually play a little bit more aggressively. And notice how her tank is still hiding. I'm basically just waiting for the right opportunity to try and hit them. And notice how their Nolan is now here. Um, our Tigreal is going to be attacking this Nolan. Unfortunately, Nolan is just so broken right now that our Tigreal can't like, basically survive that. However, I did end up being able to help our Popple kill the Nolan because of the fact that you know, my skills do damage, and quite a ton of damage, in fact. So yeah, so our clip just got back in, so hopefully there's no more cuts like that in the future. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm basically staying here a little bit longer just in case I can make a bit of an impact, but now that I saw that our Marksman recalled, I'm also going to recall here. Not more so for the health, but because I need more mana. As you guys saw, I had like basically no mana. Um, when you're playing a mage especially, you want to only try and engage when you have more than half your mana bar. Although of course you want to also gauge how much mana your skills consume when you actually cast them. I realized that my skills like cast a, take about like a fifth, a sixth of my mana if I cast all three at the same time. So I didn't want to risk things and I just recalled instead. So notice how I'm like revealing Johnson on the map here. Um, my teammates probably should have retreated after seeing that, but unfortunately they don't- No one ever looks at the map like nine like all the time, right? But because I'm still here, um, I'm actually able to do a lot of area damage. So I actually managed to kill their Valor, which is pretty impressive. Unfortunately, our teammates got a little bit too greedy, especially our Yi Jin. He probably should have just retreated there, especially since our tank was dead. But it's all good. Um, yeah, right now the score is 4-5, to five, but we're not too far behind, and I'm doing pretty well right now. Um, I need a run. This Earthal is going to kill me if I'm not careful, so I'm actually going to have to flicker. But notice how I'm saving my flicker for the very last moment, right? And I realized that flicker is not just worth it here, because I didn't feel like... Because flicker can be used in so many cases, right? Offensively and defensively. But I didn't think that flicker was worth it in that scenario, because it has a 2 minute cooldown. Like, it's pretty insane. So yeah, I just decided to die, but in exchange let my teammates get the assists and all. Which is still a pretty good trade in my opinion, because their marksman is risking their own farm in exchange for giving us more overall gold. Um, their Nolan took the turtle unfortunately, but our Yi Sun Chin isn't really an early game jungler. 
So he needs to farm a bit more. So it's completely understandable that we couldn't win that turtle. Um, in fact, that was actually a smart move. Our Tigreal went a little bit too aggro. Probably a bit of inexperience on his part. Um, a little tip about turtle taking, guys. Whenever the turtle is up, you only want to go for it if your teammates have an even number, right? So you don't want to go in if you're underhanded. So if they have like four people and you only have three, you typically don't want to engage in the turtle fight. Uh, same case if they have a higher level jungler or your jungler's skills are on cooldown. Or if the enemies just have more like crowd control in general. Like, you don't want to contest a turtle or take the turtle for that matter unless you know for a fact that you have at least a 75% chance you can take it. If there's anything less than that, you don't want to risk it because if you take the turtle but all of you guys die, that is horrible, right? But it's, what's even worse is not taking the turtle and having everyone die. So in this scenario, by the way, our batting died, but in exchange we got a kill. And it was our jungler who got the kill, so overall that was a great trade. Um, a little tip about live trading, by the way, guys. Um, a kill is not the same thing as a kill. So what I mean by that is, if your team's jungler dies in exchange for their team's tank, um, that's not an equal one-for-one one trade. Your jungler is more important than the enemy's tank, so that's actually a complete loss on your part. So in terms of who's more valuable in terms of kills, um, your jungler is the most valuable, second most valuable is the marksman, third most valuable is the mage, um, fourth most valuable is the XP laner, and finally the least valuable player in the team is the tank. In terms of kills, guys. In terms of actual effect, it's the complete opposite. So notice here, I had to flicker backwards because their alpha was about to kill me. But um, yeah, back to the topic about kills, by the way. So you want to keep that in mind when you engage. Right now, I'm just making sure that like alpha doesn't come anywhere near me. And I'm also being careful about Valor, which is why I recalled back our Lord from the ult. Um, now that I know it's safe, I recalled Lao. Um, don't recall just blindly. Always keep an eye on your surroundings before you do. So Popple just got a huge kill here. Um, Popple's actually a little bit behind Irithone farm. Um, when, before he got the kill, of course. Now he's a, ahead. But before that, he was a bit underfarmed. But he managed to get the kill on Irithel, which is huge. So right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm just getting ready to help our teammates take the turtle, essentially. And I'm trying to see where their Nolan might be. So you guys see those green orbs? Those green orbs will only stay for like 10, 15 seconds after the buff dies. So that's actually a good indicator that Nolan is somewhere close by. But because our Popple had started taking the turtle, we could have taken it pretty quickly, which is a good thing on our part. And yeah, so right now, I'm just like, we're doing like a bit of a waiting game right now. No one's visible on the map. So when this happens, you want to be especially careful, right? I know that their team has a Johnson. Um, basically, what just happened now was our Yi Sun Shin casted an ult. And I noticed right then and there that Nolan is AFK. So my only focus when looking at the map was checking where the heck Nolan was because Nolan is the only person who can really kill me right now. And because the Nolan is slightly AFK, it's a good thing for us. And because of that, we also saw from Yi Shin's ult that um, none of them are actually here. I think I die right here. Yeah, because I missed my ult. I kind of panicked because if you guys ever get slammed by a Johnson, you'll know that <laughs> it's not a fun experience. You get stunned for like two seconds. And if there's anyone riding with Johnson, you die pretty much instantly. But um, notice how Popple's doing really well. It's only been 9 minutes into the game, but already he's pushed all 2 of his turrets, and all that's left is the inhibitor. Unfortunately, Koopa dies here. Um, a little tip about fighting Popple and Koopa, if you ever see that his dog, or wolf I guess, Koopa dies, um, always go for him because it, Koopa actually gives him more than double his damage source. So Nolan just died, which is good for us. Um, unfortunately, both of our teammates just died. Which gave me an indication that Nolan either might be an AI right now, or he's back from disconnecting once. Um, so yeah. So right now we're just kind of playing, dancing along. Trying, I'm just trying to chip down their mage so that if we ever go into a team fight, we can pretty much burst him down instantly. I'm farming a little bit more, just so that I can be a little bit more careful. So yeah. Um, right now, we don't really need to do anything. And if you ever guys, if you guys ever like experience a situation like this, like right now I'm just trying to go for their marksman and try and slow down her farm even more because I know that she's behind because Popple completely dominated his lane, right? Uh, I'm just trying to kill off her minions so she can't like push the gold turret, or not gold turret, just the turret in general. So yeah, I'm just like being careful, staying around farming a bit and just judging where the enemies might be. As you guys can see, I saw the map here and I realized that Valor was about to die. Meaning that there was a high chance that his teammates would probably come to try and back him up. Um, unfortunately, 
none of them engaged and none of our teammates engaged so my skill just kind of went to waste here however notice how quickly my ult came back right and notice how much damage my second skill dealt that's because we're basically like you know vexana is a burst mage with this build and their nolan just went in way too haywire just now i think he might be an ai i'm not super sure but yeah now that my skills are on cooldown i don't want to go in and engage because i don't have the damage output to just kill them right i'm just trying to like give vision to my teammates because I can see that they're about to take the Lord. And now that I know that their Lord is secured, I'm just going to the nearby wave and clearing the minions just to get a little bit more farm. So notice how I'm third place in our team's gold. Um, you want to try and aim to at least be third place in gold at all times if you're playing solo queue, especially because if you're behind in gold, you can't win fights, right? You need the gold to be able to fight the enemies. So even if they're 10 kills ahead, if you have more goals than if you have more gold than them, you can still fight them and kill them, right? So kills and KDA are not an indication of can you fight someone and win. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It's how much farm do you have and gold. So notice how I was able to just basically insta-kill Nolan there and our Papa was able to finish him off. Um, you want to make sure you do that and notice how I flickered past the wall to dodge. Um, aiming a flicker is also a really important skill to have because flicker is such a versatile skill. There's a reason why it has a 2 minute cooldown because it's so OP if you know how to use it. So I just helped our popple take the buff. I didn't really need it or anything because popple right now is our MVP. Um, understand like I know that Vixana is not a strong hero in mythic so right now I'm just like aiming to support my teammates in whatever way I can. Launching stuns, launching controlling skills. Unfortunately, our Yi just died. However, our Tigreal did land an amazing control skill just now with his ult. And I was able to get a second skill in and just completely decimate their Irithyll. Our batting, meanwhile, has came in from the back line. Unfortunately, he died to the turret. <laughs> and I think he did waste flicker just now. So that was a complete disadvantage. I need to recall because as you guys can see, I have literally no mana. So I have to go back. And yeah, so actually, never mind. The build was the build that I use. So definitely use this build. Um, the reason why is because you want burst over anything else. Um, just keep that in mind. If you end up building your tank, that's only if you choose her as a roamer, which I highly unrecommend, by the way, guys. Do not use Vexana as a roamer. Um, she might be decent in lower ranks, but in higher ranks like this, just don't. It's not beneficial for your team. You don't have a sustained control skill. So unless you're picking like... I don't know, maybe another tanky fighter, don't go Vixana Rome, right? Use her more like a support mage if you're gonna play with like a heavy tank team with lots of crowd control skills, or just build her burst, which is what I just did right in this game, right? And burst is much more effective in my opinion. I've tried out several builds with her, got a ton of losses with her, because <laughs> you know, Mythic does not reward like branded heroes like Vixana, unfortunately. So and I also wasn't really familiar with how to use her, so it took me a couple of matches to learn that the best combo is actually 3, 2, 1 once you level up your ult and get some more damage. What Yizun Shin just tried to do here, by the way, was um, he tried to use his dash. I tried to use my ult to tank the Johnson, but unfortunately it didn't work out. And if you guys don't know how I just died here, it's actually Vengeance. So Vengeance is that skill that I'm about to unlock on the Zero to Hero account at level 21. That's a skill that basically all the damage you receive um, 35% is reduced and 35% of it is reflected, right? So all the damage that gets reduced is also reflected back at the enemy in terms of magic damage. And because I was attacking the Johnson while he had that skill activated, uh, the damage actually reflected back to me. And since I was low on health, the reflected damage actually was able to kill me, which is why I died. But right now, as you guys can see, our team's doing decently. Um, all of our teammates, as you guys can see here, are actually doing pretty good in terms of farm. We're not really behind or anything, despite being 18 to 19 on the kills. So it's a pretty even match. No one has a really big advantage right now, which is surprising, honestly. But I think it has to do with the Nolan having gone AFK for a bit. So their Tigre our Tigreal is just doing really good right now. I'm trying to launch as many stuns as possible, positioning myself so that I'm never being targeted. Um, that's how you want to play mages and pretty much all carries in general. You want to play in a way that uh, obviously I just died, but you want to play in a way that you can minimize the amount of exposure to the enemies and just stay back and just chip out damage, right? That's how you want to play. Unfortunately, like I said, Irithyll is just such a strong marksman right now. She deals a ton of damage while also being able to hit multiple enemies at once while moving. So there's a reason why she's number one marksman right now. She got a pretty heavy buff last update. And yeah, so they managed to steal the Lord from us, which is really unfortunate. But like I said, Johnson, unless we can tank him, like, it's just 
Doom for us. Our Popple, on the other hand though, did have Inspire, <laughs> and you guys know already how broken Inspire is. I wouldn't say it's a good spell on Popple, but thankfully our Popple is smart as a player, and he's using that to his advantage. So he's actually getting a ton of kills with that, which is really impressive in my opinion. But um, yeah. So right now we're just going. I saw Johnson ulting towards Popple just now, but as you guys can see, he popped up on the map in like the middle area just there. And now you can see he's coming, so I'm just keeping an eye on him. Always keep an eye on the mini map if the enemies are invisible. And they just crashed into, I think, sub I don't know exactly who, but um, notice how I'm ignoring the Johnson completely and I'm going straight for their Valor, which is also what our Yi Sun Jin is doing here. And now that Valor has successfully escaped, now we can go for Johnson because he's just trapped in here, right? Um, always focus on the squishy heroes first before you go for the tankier heroes. And notice how Nolan is here. Um, I'm just kind of CC chaining him alongside our Tigreal. Our Tigreal died in the process, unfortunately, which is sad, but it's okay because now they're overextending and I'm being able to position myself well and dish out a ton of damage, right? So our Popple is doing pretty well here. And we managed to get four kills in exchange for two, which is an absolutely amazing deal despite our jungler dying, right? because their jungler died as well, their tank died alongside our tank, and we managed to kill their mage and XP laner. So overall, this was an absolute win, even if we hadn't gotten as many kills. Um, yeah. So right now, what I'm trying to do is, I'm just trying to see where the last person is. I'm just trying to see if I can ambush them from a bush. And I guess I'm just trying to like, okay, I saw Johnson on the map just now after he respawned. There's a really high chance that he's gonna be driving nearby us. Okay, never mind. I saw him at the base. So that means that he's, not anywhere near us, so we can just move out. Um, however, okay, we just saw him crash, so that means Johnson won't get his ult back for at least 20 seconds. So I can keep that information in mind as we go in. Um, unfortunately, our Tegrio right now is also slightly AFK. I don't know what he's <laughs> I don't know what he's really doing, but um, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Um, we're 6-4-13 right now, so we're doing pretty well. And our Tegrio is finally back online. And yeah, right now, this is what I really like to call the middle stage of the game, where even though it's a late game, it's middle phase because you don't really do anything because the enemies are trapped in their base, they're not coming out, and you guys can't really push because, you know, there's minions but they're killing the minions and the enemies can ambush us just now, like as you guys can see, Batting is running for his life right now. Um, I actually saw that on the map, so I'm coming in and CC chaining them. Unfortunately, I can't kill any of them because I just don't have enough damage yet. I don't think I have Glowing Wand yet, which is probably why. But um, notice how our teammates saw that I like, basically cut down all of their health. So now they're going in from the back lines and just finishing them off, right? So our batting didn't die in vain. However, our tank did die, so we're still in a losing trade here. Um, right now, my goal is since our teammates are taking Lord, I'm trying to zone the enemies as much as I can, predict where the Nolan might go, and notice how, um, because he wanted to go and steal our Lord, I aimed my second seal a little bit ahead so that he would step into it if he did end up trying to contest. And because of that, I chipped down his health so much that he was basically at one shot, so he had to run, right? Um, and yeah, I think I just got Winter Truncheon now, so I'm at completely full build. So notice how I'm casting my skills and everything, and look how much damage Vexana can do. This is why you use the burst field, because Veil, um, yeah, sorry, not Veil. Valor is a DPS mage, not a burst mage, so. You know, I can basically just insta-kill him, right? Unless he builds a defense item, which I'm pretty sure he won't do because most mage players don't understand how to build differently, right? Especially if they're like in the lower ranks. Like even though this is Mythic Honor, it's pretty interesting how people don't know how to build. So notice how Nolan is chasing me now, and I'm like 90% confident I'm about to die here. However, I did realize that I could just cast my skills and like sidestep essentially, and because of that, I actually managed to help our teammates get the kill on Nolan. And now their alpha needs to run as well because my ult is still there. This is actually one of the advantages that Vixana has that I really like and enjoy about her, is that her ult will actually stay and keep fighting for 15 seconds, even if you personally leave the battlefield. Like, even if you die, it'll stay until the timer, like, runs out. So it makes it so that Vixana can get a lot of assists pretty easily. And combined with her burst kit, it makes it so that she can support and deal damage at the same time, which is really impressive. So I see that the Johnson is here. I'm aiming just for the um, Irithal right now. Unfortunately, I missed her. However, Artigrio did manage to land a really good stun here. This is what I mean, guys, by tanks are the MVP. Unfortunately, we couldn't really follow up. I wasn't able to hit my skills pretty accurately, and our batting and our popple weren't nearby. So our tank did just die in vain. Um, I guess that 
was a mistake on our parts because Tigreal probably went in noticing that we were here and we probably could have killed some of them, but unfortunately it just didn't work out. I decided Glowing One is not a good idea right now because Glowing One is more of a damage over time kind of item rather than a burst. So instead I sold it and I'm like, okay, let's go for Holy Crystal. So if you guys, I think I told this in the past, but Holy Crystal's gimmick is basically it gives you a percentage based magic power boost. So it's like it gives you 35% extra magic power on top of what you already have. Um, so it's an end game item. Our Popol just got slammed by Johnson, which is what I was like voicing my concerns about at the start, guys. Johnson's gimmick is basically his ult is he transforms into a car and he can take a teammate with him. And if he slams into you, you get stunned for like a second. He throws his hammer, which is another second, so you end up getting stunned for two seconds in total, which is a horrible experience if you were the one who got slammed. Especially because because he's bringing along a teammate. <laughs> in this case, like I think the the teammate was Nolan, right? Um, you basically are guaranteed to die, because if you can't do anything for two seconds while the enemies are chasing you and it's blindly hitting you, um, there's basically nothing you can do. So I noticed that um, Johnson is getting pulled in by Articulo here, so I'm actually just like staying in the back. Another thing that I notice a lot of mage players in the lower ranks doing is they go out in the front and they try to you know, attack the enemies despite not having any skills. Don't do that guys. Stay back, be calm, wait for your skills to recharge, and then go in. The fight's not going anywhere, everyone's still going to be there, and don't be impatient and just go die when your skills will be in, like, will be back in action in literally a couple of seconds. Like, be careful and stay back. And yeah. So right now, they're taking Lord. I'm not too concerned right now because none of our teammates are dead, and our notice how our batting and our popple are pushing in top lane. So right now, my goal is actually to distract them as long as I can, because there's a really high chance that because two of our heavy damage dealers are in the top lane, they can actually attack. I managed to somehow steal Lord, and their plan was a success. They managed to backdoor the enemies and completely end the game, which is really impressive on their parts. And a wise decision too, because they realized that we already had our jungler on our side, so it was a good thing on their part. So yeah, this was part of my losing streak. I think this is one of the games that ended it, and we managed to get MVP. So yeah, so this was, I, you know, just me sharing the game to get some more stuff. Honestly, I don't need to do that on this account because it's already completely maxed. I have all the heroes. Um, Nolan was AFK, but he wasn't AFK anymore because you could tell there's a huge difference between players who are acting like bots and who aren't. And Alpha says lol. <laughs> and somehow I did 40% of our team's damage, guys. That's pretty insane. 76% team fight. Vixana does hit hard, and if you know how to play her, she's really good. Um, I personally think that she'll be decent until you start fighting godly junglers. So probably until like Mythic Glory, she'll still be a decent mage. Um, once you go past that though, she's probably going to be falling off really hard. It's the reason why you don't want to pick like mages like Cyclops for instance. He's really strong, but if the enemy jungle knows what they're doing, you're pretty much useless. So just be careful about that. However, Vixana was really good. So that was that. So that was the gameplay. I actually have another situation that I want to show you guys. So you guys can see that I dropped from 34 stars all the way down to 24, which was insanely sad. <laughs> I had a 14 loss streak as I told you guys before. Um, but yeah, it happens. Right now I'm at 42 stars, so obviously you can lose and then win again. So just never like get down about it. Like I had that 14 loss streak immediately after I had a 7 win streak, I lost. I had a 9 win streak, I lost. I had a 10 win streak. And yeah. And then like you win, lose, win, lose occasionally, but sometimes you just do crazy and you get a ton of winning streaks in a row. But um, yeah, but before I go, I want to show you guys this one other scenario where I managed to do really well, but somehow we lost. So let's just go right into that. So for this game, unfortunately, I already knew from the start that there was a high chance that we would lose. So as you guys can see here, um, our team comp is actually weaker because notice how they have a late game composition. Oh, we have a Layla, sure, but they have an Atlas, and Atlas, if you guys don't know, is one of the main counters to Estes. So I realized that we were in a pretty bad spot, especially because our jungler, like, you know, I mean, they have a, there's a really high chance that their Cyclops is the jungler, because, you know, they have a Cog or a Mage. And then they have Claude, and then they have Guinevere, and then they have Atlas. They have a pretty deadly combo of Atlas ulting someone, and then Guinevere just jumping into the same spot where he ults, and then just ulting right back while Kagu can also launch some pretty good like stuns in. So I knew for a fact that this was a really risky battle. Um, I'm using the same build as before, and yeah. So I knew that there was a really high chance we would lose this already, so I was a little bit unsure of how this would go. Um, the game started out pretty decently. Um, 
Guinevere got first blood, but at the same time, our Minstar was able to get the kill on Guinevere. So it started off as a pretty even trade. Um, I'm just kind of dancing along the lines right now versus Kagura. And notice how our Estes and our Julian are fighting pretty decently. They're roaming together. However, notice how you guys can see here are actually not even that bad. Like you guys can see Layla is dominating Claude right now. Um, and their Atlas isn't really looking like he's knowing what he's doing. However, notice how this Kagura is just dancing around me and just dealing out more damage. However, I return the fire and yeah. And fast forwarding a bit here, um, we were doing okay in teamfights. As you guys can see, however, the score is 6 to 9. <laughs> I guess a wonderful number, 6 9. Um, but besides the point, <laughs> um, looking at this, we're actually doing a bit of a teamfight here. And this kind of scenario actually popped up quite often. Vixana is pretty decent in teamfights, especially since we have an Estes to heal. However, right now, notice how our lanes are like, even though we're not losing too bad, like we captured their mid lane and their bottom lane while they took only our top lane. Um, notice how we're team fighting from the start, right? So this is actually pretty typical of a mythic match, and you might see this often in your ranks too. I was just trying to keep an eye out for where their Atlas was, because their Atlas is their most risky player. As you guys can see here, he ulted like two of our teammates, and um, this is a pretty dangerous fight. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I flickered in to get the kill on Atlas. <coughs> Oh my god, I'm sneezing so much. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and I noticed how I was like, okay, I think we can do some good things here. Um, I unfortunately got caught by Guinevere here, but somehow I survived. Um, I guess it was because Estee's healing me. And I managed to kill the Claude because he teleported directly into my second skill. And we ended up winning this fight. So right now we're doing pretty good. We're 3-1-1. And fast forwarding a bit more again. Um, the score has evened out a bit more. So it's 13-12. Um, right now I'm 4-1-2. So pretty good. And I saw that Guinevere was here. This is actually, I want to show you this because I wanted to show you why 3, 2, 1 is a better combo. Notice how I was able to basically instantly kill their Guinevere by using my ult first, which cancelled Guinevere's jump, by the way, because her animation skill was a bit too slow. I airboard her, then my stun hit, and then I hit her with my second skill, and then my ult was able to get one more hit in and just instantly kill her. So that's something I just want to show you guys, why you should always use 3, 2, 1, or 3, 1, 2 even, instead of starting with your first skill and then going in with your ult. It's always better to go with the skills that land faster for any hero, and then with subsequent CCs for following up before you do anything else. Because if you can instantly stun the enemy, um, that's always what you want to do. That's why, for instance, with like Aurora, you want to use her enhanced second skill, like when you have her stacks up, because the second skill instantaneously freezes the enemy, before you use your third skill and your first skill to finish them off. So I just wanted to give you guys that like bit of intuition. And yeah, <clears throat> so basically now um, I'm gonna go into like a big team fight. So you guys will see. So the thing about Vexana is, okay, so you guys see that I'm about to be bursted down, but our Minstar did a really good um, ult there. So notice how I was able to kill two of them basically instantaneously with my skills. Uh, Vexana does a lot of damage. So I just got a triple kill, uh, and a maniac, just like that. So Vixana is pretty strong in terms of burst damage. And now Guinevere is actually here. So let me see if I can actually go for the Savage. Oh, I wasn't able to predict her. She actually baited both me and Minsithar. I'm going to use Flicker here just so that I can actually try and kill this Guinevere. Um, she's trying something. I don't know what. Um, I cast in my second skill and uh, that's a rip. That's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, so shifting situations, yeah, I'm unfortunate that I didn't get the Savage, but it is what it is. Um, it happens, guys. So Maniac was good enough, but we're contesting this Lord here. I killed both of them, which is really good. So we should be able to secure this Lord pretty freely here. <gasps> but the Rikago was able to steal it. <sighs> that means that, yeah, that was unfortunate. And now my entire team is basically dead, so I have to run the frick away before everyone else also, like, you know, because Cyclops is technically, no, not Cyclops, Layla was technically still alive, but she's dead now as well, and Cyclops is chasing me like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> so I need to run. He ults me, but I got into my turret, so he can't really do anything. The Kagura is trying something as well, but I avoid it. So now, unfortunately, um, if you guys don't know, by the way, Lord spawns at either the 15 second mark or the 45 second mark after you kill it. So notice how it spawned at 1445. Um, you guys can know that ahead of time. So how much time you have until like the Lord spots, right? But I knew for a fact that this is going to be really risky for us because we don't have much farm compared to them, despite being up in kills. And my teammates are just getting killed in like in an instant, right? So two of our teammates just died again. So now all we have left are Julian and Layla. 
but Julian and Layla alone is not gonna be enough. I managed to flick her out to safety, but Julian can't do that because he has retribution. So now we're just left. Um, Layla just got jumped by Guinevere, so I'm the only one alive. There are minions, and I already knew that this would be a GG before it was even GG because of the fact that everyone was dead and I was the only one sort of like left standing. So this game I did a lot better than I actually did in the game I showed you guys, but unfortunately it was a defeat, so I didn't want to just use that as the example. I think this was actually like two or three games before I played, so my rank, I didn't lose the rank because I had a rank protection card, but I got a 15-1-7 KDA, um, that was okay I guess, and I got 12.9 MVP. <laughs> I was kind of triggered at my teammates, so I called my teammates Teletubbies. Um, it's not too much trash talk, but it is trash talk. Uh, don't trash talk if you can, guys. The SDs was smart though, so I thumbs him up, but the rest of my teammates just didn't really know what they're doing. Um, the reason why I trash talk at this level, on the other hand though, is because you are- Okay, the Atlas was actually trash talking. <laughs> but if you're this high up in rank, by the way, guys, you should not just be, like, you know, throwing by that much. So unfortunately, that was a loss, but it is what it is. And yeah, hopefully you guys learned something new. Um, that was Vixana gameplay. Um, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Um, and I guess next time I'll be covering Glue. It's either Gatot or Glue. I'll probably cover both of them in the next like two episodes of this. Um, but yeah, next episode, well, I'll probably be releasing a new Zero to Hero sometime soon. So after that, um, I'll probably upload some other videos as well. So keep an eye out for those. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, like I said. And let me know if you guys enjoy Mythic ranked gameplay. Um, that was actually not too high of a level. Um, the other videos that I'll show you are a bit higher up in Mythic Honor, so like 30 stars, 33 stars, around there. Um, and yeah, right now, as you guys can see, I'm at 41 stars. Um, pretty impressive. Um, I actually thought I was 42, but then I realized I actually had a loss, so I was 41 stars. But it is what it is. Um, I'll be ranking up to glory, and I'll be making a post the moment I do. Hopefully I can do it before I hit 100 subs, and then yeah. I'll prepare something special on like a maybe a post or maybe I'll mention it in a video as well. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for your support up till now. I'm really happy that you guys are loving everything and thank you so much. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye!